Are you ready for the word? Man, I am so ready to share and excited today about the opportunities that God is giving us as a church. Listen, we're starting a brand new season next week. We're going to be continuing on Facebook Live, and uh, we're going to be reopening the church here. And uh, I, for one, have to believe that God has his church in his hands and that his purpose is that his church would grow and be blessed. And that includes Fountain of Life. And so this morning I want to speak to you today on the subject, Since We Have Another Day. Aren't you glad you woke up this morning? I know I am. Hey, that beats not waking up, right? God has given us another day. And uh, that's just not true in the, in the physical sense, but, but it's also true in the sense that we're entering a brand new season, a brand new day. And I believe that this morning God is going to speak to our hearts through his word. I believe he's going to give us courage. I believe he's going to give us faith uh, to be able to move ahead in the next season. A couple of weeks ago, I shared a message about finding your voice as a believer. And that message really touched me as I wrote it and I shared it. And we were focused uh, two weeks ago in Acts chapter 27. It's a story of Paul and his journey to Rome. It's a story of how at first they didn't listen to Paul's warnings. He told them there's a great storm coming and that it was going to cause great damage. Well, they ignored what Paul said and just went right on doing what they wanted to do, and they sailed on. Well, a storm did come. It was a northeastern storm that must have been moving incredibly slowly because it lasted 14 days. And when it seemed all hope was gone, that everyone was going to perish, Paul stood up in the midst of those passengers after a time of prayer and fasting and said, listen, I believe God. He sent me an angel to tell me that some really good news. Yes, the ship's going to be lost, the cargo's going to perish, but not one life would perish. And so as Acts 27 ends, we discover that Paul's words from the Lord had come to pass. The ship was lost, the cargo was lost, but God in his grace had spared those 276 passengers. The ship broke up and they were able to swim the shore on the boards from the ship. And it's really a remarkable story of the grace of God. Not one life was lost. And so today we're going to pick up right where we left off two weeks ago, 276 Weary passengers and crew had swam the shore. It was a cold and rainy morning. Of course, they didn't know what kind of people were on this island. They didn't know what kind of reception they were going to get. All they knew was that they had been given another chance to live, another day to live. I want to read the story for you today out of Acts chapter 28, verses 1 uh, through 6. It says, Now when they had escaped, they then found out that the island was called Malta. And the natives showed us unusual kindness, for they kindled a fire and made us all welcome because of the rain that was falling and because of the cold. But when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, a viper came out because of the heat and fastened on his hand. So when the natives saw the creature hanging from his hand, they said to one another, no doubt this man is a murderer, whom though he has escaped from the sea, yet justice does not allow to live. But he shook off the creature into the fire and suffered no harm. However, they were expecting that he would swell up and suddenly fall down but after they had looked for a long time and saw no harm come to him, they changed their minds and said that he was a God. This is the story of Paul as he faced a new day. Now the truth is that Paul had not anticipated a day like this one. Paul didn't plan on being shipwrecked on an island named Malta. He didn't plan on getting bit by a viper. It wasn't written down in his itinerary to be there. This was an unexpected part of his life. And you can imagine how Paul must have been feeling 
physically and emotionally. He had been fasting and praying. And, and I'll tell you, that's hard work. And, and it, fasting makes you physically weak. He's been cast up on the shore of an island. It's raining, it's cold, and it's weary. But Paul was a strong believer in Jesus. And he was not the type to say, I think I'll just sit down by the fire that's been made for me and, and just try to dry out a little bit. No, as Paul faced a new season, as Paul faced a new day, I would imagine that he was thinking, I am going to seize this day for the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the day that the Lord has made. He was thinking, this is not a time for me to get off mission. It's not a time for me to stop serving. This is not some strange uh, coincidence in my life where the plan of God has somehow been thwarted. And I think Paul understood the, the scriptures that tell us that the steps of a good man are ordered of the Lord. That he had to trust in the Lord with all of his heart and not lean on his own understanding. But he was going to acknowledge his ways. And he knew that God was directing his path. And I have no proof of this. But in my, my, my mind, I think he was saying to himself, since we have another day. Since we didn't perish, since we are alive, since God saw fit to rescue us from a horrible storm and a horrible shipwreck, I am making up my mind that I am going to serve the Lord. And I want for us who are part of Fountain of Life or any other church for that matter to realize that God has given us another day. God has given us a new day. Churches all across America are reopening during this month and in the weeks to follow. And we need to understand that what we went through as a church, not having services together, you know, all this business about wearing face masks, watching the news, some people losing their job for a season, having changes in the way we go about life and do things on a daily basis, all of this thing about taking the church on. Facebook Live, you know, YouTube. I'm going to tell you, that was all in the very plan of God for our lives. And just like Paul had been given a new opportunity, a new day, even so, we as a church have been given a new opportunity. May we as a church say to ourselves, as Paul did, let's seize the day. Let's make the most of this opportunity. And I believe that we can learn from this passage this morning, we can learn some things on how to navigate the next season that we're going to. The attitudes that Paul had, the things that he did, the things that God did will teach us very important lessons on what to do and what to expect as we enter the next season. Uh, so first of all, number one, since we have another day, number one, we must be grateful for the unexpected blessings. For Paul and his companions, a warm campfire for them was an unexpected blessing. Now, when we go out camping with the rangers and it's cold and we've had some days like that, I tell you, I am so happy when I get up and Judah or Jose has the fire going and Kevin has the coffee pot on. And I've been camping when it's pretty chilly and I know the way a campfire feels when it's like 36 degrees outside so i can only imagine how it must have felt crawling out of the sea chilled to the bone in the in the in the rain to have a, a, an unexpected blessing of a campfire acts chapter 28 tells us the details it says now when they had escaped then they found out that the island was called malta and the natives showed us notice what it says unusual kindness for they kindled a fire and made us all welcome because of the rain it was falling and because of the cold. The natives showed unusual kindness. How many of you know being made welcome is an unusual kindness? No doubt food was given, warm drink was given, blankets were given, clothes were offered that were dry. It could have been that they had landed on, a, on an island with fierce people who wanted to kill them all. But God had led them to this place where they were being shown an unusual kindness. Now, I don't know about how you feel about your relationship with God right now, but I feel like God has shown us unusual kindnesses. 
Even in this season, I have decided to live my life with an attitude of gratitude. I am grateful that this far, you know, not a single person that I've known personally has died from coronavirus. My father, who's 87 years of age, has not contracted that disease. Jereen's mother, who's in her 90s, who lives in a county that's just being ravaged by this thing, uh, has not contracted that disease. I don't know about you, but I'm grateful for every paycheck I get. I'm grateful for to have, be able to have cookies and milk at night. Man, there's just so many good things to thank God for, even during a season like this. And I'll tell you, I almost feel like I've been eating better, eating better uh, in this season than two Christmases kind of put together. I mean, Jereen had just been cooking away all the time. I don't know about how you feel, but I'm grateful. Grateful to slow down just a little bit. Grateful for modern technologies. Grateful for doctors and nurses and nurses. And, and most of all, grateful for the peace of God that guards our hearts and our mind. I so grateful and if you're grateful today I want you just to make a little comment on this uh, YouTube on this uh, YouTube or or Facebook live uh, uh, presentation and, and say how grateful you are maybe what you're even grateful for uh, but Paul teaches us in, in that season even after being shipwrecked that we can be grateful for life itself and unusual kindness and then secondly, since we have another day that God has given us, number two, we must continue to serve. Now, I admire Paul. That guy must have been just like the Energizer Bunny. While others are laying around a fire thinking how fortunate they are to be alive, Paul is already seizing the day, serving his community. He isn't setting still. He's probably still wet and freezing, but he's thinking of others. Acts 28, verse 3 tells us what he did. It said, when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks. Now, that may not sound like an important detail, like it's just there to, you know, announce how the, you know, that a snake came out of the fire. But I think all of God's word is important. And I think this teaches us something important that we as believers have got to continue to serve the Lord. We don't stop serving just because it's a season of tragedy. In fact, what we do is we serve even more. We keep on serving. And it may not seem like much. I mean, he had gathered some sticks, some, uh, a bundle of sticks for the fire. How many bundles did he gather? doesn't say. But we can be assured that Paul was doing what he could. Now, you know, a lot of times we see our service to God and, and we think, you know, that it's really not that important. Some think that, you know, what I do for God doesn't really count in the big scheme of things. Um, that, 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 you know, uh, you know what, what Paul did was not really that important. You know, in fact, in that day, uh, you know, a Roman citizen probably wouldn't have been out gathering firewood. You know, that would have been left to the servants. But you see, Paul saw himself first and foremost as a bondservant of Jesus Christ. And for you and me as Christians, serving others must always take precedence in our lives. Serving others is always seen by God. And you might be saying, well, you know, Pastor all I've really been able to do during this season is just say some prayers for the church and for others. Let me tell you something. If you've done that, I want to tell you how wonderful. Praise God. What a wonderful service to the king. Prayer is powerful. You might be thinking, man, all I've done is just, you know, went to the store a couple times. I've called a few people, texted some others, and, you know, posted some stuff on Facebook. But listen, you're doing what you can. And let me tell you sometimes I believe that the greatest thing a church can actually do is pray in fact I believe that that's one of the reasons for this entire season is that we would take some time and pray and I just believe that the small things make a really big difference I love first Corinthians chapter 15 and first number 58 in fact it has really become my life verse I want to fulfill this verse it says this therefore my beloved brethren be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, 
knowing that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. I just want to tell you that what you pray is not in vain. What you do for God is not in vain. So stay set steadfast. Stay like a rock, immovable, unswayed by what's going on around you. And always be abounding in the work of the Lord. And so we need, I believe, to make up our mind right now. Since God has given us another day, since we're going to be starting anew in, in, in a sense, since we're coming back together next Sunday and reopening our church, we need to make up a decision that we are going to continue with the mission God's given us to proclaim this gospel of Jesus Christ and to serve the Lord, always abounding in his work. Come on. And then number three, since we have another day, number three, we must be aware of the attacks of the enemy. And this is where the story gets into me. Interesting. I believe Paul experienced an attack of the enemy. He was bitten by a snake. And can I just put it like this, that that devil, that old serpent, man, he could not stand the fact that Paul was still serving. And he can't stand the fact that you are still serving the Lord. Just like the devil was upset with Paul, he's upset with you that you are still serving him. And I don't think that this was all just coincidence. Paul was in the plan of God for his life. He was on his way to Rome to testify before Caesar. He was in the center of God's will. And then this viper latches on to his hand. You know, a lot of people think that if something negative happens, something bad happens, it's because you must have been doing something wrong. How many of you know that you can be doing something right and the enemy will come at you as well. And you get attacked. I mean, let's face it. Satan didn't want Paul ser serving. He wanted Paul discouraged, taking a seat on the sideline, quiet. In fact, I believe that the enemy actually wanted Paul dead. Because doesn't the word tell us that the thief doesn't come except for to kill and to steal and to destroy? And so when, when, he, when Paul laid that bundle of sticks on the fire, like it says in Acts 28, 3 to 6, it says, a viper came out because of the heat and fastened on his hand. And, you know, the locals were sitting back and going, man, he is going to puff up. He's going to swell up and fall over dead. But he didn't. Why? Because in verse 5 it tells us, it says he shook off the creature into the fire and suffered no harm. The fact that this creature was a viper, I believe, is significant for us. Because you see, in Genesis chapter 1, Satan is seen as a serpent. And a viper had attacked. And I'm going to tell you something. I believe that in some areas in our culture, the church is under attack by the enemy, by the spirit of Antichrist in our world. I'm praying for the churches in California because they have been told that they cannot reopen for three to six months. In California, they're not called an essential business, okay? And uh, they're seen as just some type of entertainment. And, you know, I have questions about that. Why can a, in California, can you go to Costco and to a liquor store and go get an abortion, but you can't go to church? I don't understand all of that. Let me tell you, the devil doesn't want the church to reopen. He doesn't want us to believe God. He doesn't want us to advance. He'll do all that he can to disrupt that, including attacking the church of Jesus Christ. And so I just want to make a declaration over Fountain of Life today. Satan has no power or authority in our midst. You say, well, can't he, can he attack? Yes, he can, and he probably will. But I've got good news for you and me because the Word tells us no weapon formed against us is going to prosper. In any season, we've got to be aware that the enemy wants to bring harm to the body. But, 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 but we've got to keep on serving. And I want us to believe that the church of Jesus Christ, fountain of life, is going to move together in faith in spite of any and all attacks of the enemy. And I've got good news for you today. We are destined to win over the enemy. You might be saying, you know, Pastor, how can you say that? How do you know that? I'll tell you how. Luke chapter 10 
And verse number 19 tells us this. It says, Behold, these are Jesus' words. He said, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions. And that's just not something physical. That's something spiritual. And over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Now, that doesn't mean that Satan won't try. He's going to try. Even as a church you know, begins to come back together. There are going to be numerous opinions about how we ought to go about that and how should we do that. Some people are, are you know, think we should have never closed in the first place, perhaps. Others, you know, th you know think we're going too fast. And, and he would love to bring division to many churches around our world as people struggle to come back together. But here's the key, my friend. We cannot give Satan even an inch. Come on. We've got the stand together. And the fact that Paul was bitten on his hand was significant. Why? Because it's the hand of our body. That's the part that serves. And I love Paul's response to the attack of the enemy. He just shook that snake off into the fire. Acts 28 and 5 says, but he shook off the creature into the fire and he went on about his business and he suffered no harm. I'm going to tell you that the attacks of the enemy are bound to happen. He will try to attack your mind. He will try to exaggerate situations, tell you lies, accuse you. But my friend, don't let him do it. Just shake that old snake off into the fire. Come on. He'll try to attack your home. He wants to bring marital discord and family problems and upset children but don't worry about that just shake that snake off and go on and believe the Lord he's going to try to attack you in the coming season with doubt and with worry and with fear but when you feel that happening recognize who it is and shake that old snake off into the fire come on he'll try to attack you with your finances and get you worried about the economy but don't worry about all of that just shake Shake it off into the fire and trust that God has this and he's got your back. Come on. And I believe that there was a reason for this attack. You see, Satan wanted to destroy Paul. But isn't it amazing how our God can take something negative and turn it into a positive? And you see, uh, God had a plan, and his plan was to bring revival to that land. So let's be aware as we come back together that we're not going to allow the enemy to attack us. And if he does, we're just going to shake it off. Let's move forward in this story, number four. Since we have another day, number four, we must believe God for revival. This historical portion in God's word describes Paul's life, and it shows us the heart of God. Now understand this today. They're shipwrecked. They have nowhere to go. They're on an island for some time. And, you know, Paul could have just kept quiet. He could have found himself a hammock somewhere, you know, a nice wool blanket and just laid down, taken a little sabbatical and arrested. But Paul did not do that. Let's read what happened. Acts 28 and verse 7 it says, In that region there was an estate of the leading citizen of the island whose name was Publius, who received us and entertained us courteously for three days. And it happened that the father of Publius lay sick of a fever and dysentery. Paul went into him and prayed, and he laid his hands on him and healed him. You see, what Paul did was he took a step of faith. You know, he could have said, yeah, he'll probably get better on his own, or, you know, he's old. It's not really my business to go in there. But he didn't do that. Instead, he reasoned in his mind. He said this, I know who my God is. I know he's the healer. I know that he is good. And I know that when he heals, it brings him glory. And I know that furthermore, that he has given us authority to lay hands on the sick and pray the prayer of faith and believe that people would recover. So Paul said, I'm going to step out in faith and pray. So he went in and he to Publius' father. And he prayed for him. He laid his hands on him. How incredible that the same hands that were bitten by the serpent, my friend, were used to bring healing and grace to that community. And, of course, 
God heard and God answered and God healed Publius' father. And Paul understood something, my friend, that I believe that we as the church need to understand. And here's, the, here's what I want to say today, that wherever we are at in the world, the Holy Spirit within us is going to lead us to opportunities to minister to others, to pray for others, and to share our faith. Whatever situation we're in, if we even find ourselves shipwrecked on an island, if we are at work and, and there's a desperate situation, if we're with our family and, and, and the family is in crisis, if circumstances are not what we thought they would be, if we're broke down on the highway, listen, we don't need to worry or fret because the plan of God is to bring faith and to bring healing and to touch the people of God around us with his love and with his power. And I believe that as society comes back together, as things start to reopen, the Holy Spirit's going to start moving again in power. God is always on the move. And I, I can assure you of one thing. Paul did more than pray. As people began to gather and hear of the healing, they probably said, you know, how did this come about? You know, who is this man that can be bitten by a snake? Is he a God? You know, how, how can he pray for people and lay hands on people and they get better? Who, who is he? And let me tell you what Paul did. He did the very same thing that you and I have to do. Paul simply began to lift up Jesus. He said, listen, this isn't about me. Uh, I'm just a servant. But let me tell you who I serve. His name is Jesus. He's the son of the living God. He was born of a virgin. He lived a sinless life. He did countless miracles that proved his divinity. He walked on the water, turned the water into wine. He raised the dead, cleansed the leper, and healed the sick. And most importantly, he died on a cross for your sin and for mine and on the third day he arose from the grave and he lives forever and he's the same yesterday today and forever and that we can have new life and faith if we trust in him and eternal life he said it's not me I, i'm just his servant we pray in his name and his authority and it's his healing power that touches and saves and man i love what happened Revival touched that island. People started believing in Jesus, getting saved, getting blessed. I love Acts 28 and verse number 9. It says, so when this was done, the rest of those on the island who had diseases also came and were healed. They came from everywhere on this island. And I don't want you to think of this island like, you know, like Gilligan's Island, okay? Today, almost 500,000 people live on that island now it's, it's unknown how many lived there in that day but some estimate at least several thousand people lived on that island and i can assure you but by the time it was over the island had heard the gospel of jesus christ and revival had come and my friend i'm believing that in the coming weeks and months and even in years that god's going to send a sweeping wave of holy spirit revival to the church of the living god i believe in that our God is wonderful and powerful and may the same God who honored Paul's faith may it honor our may he honor our faith may we have the same courage to step out in faith and pray for the sick and testify to the goodness of God come on are you believing God for revival in the weeks to come I'm trusting that God is going to show up among churches all around our world today come on and then number five since we have another day, we must expect, I'm telling you, not hope for, but we've got to expect his providential care. Now I want you to imagine what these 276 people had experienced in that shipwreck. They got to shore where, with just the clothes that they had on. Everything else had perished at the bottom of the sea. Yet because of the grace of God, because the healing touch of Jesus had swept across that island. I want you to note what it says in Acts 28 and verse 10. It says, they also honored us in many ways. And when we departed, they provided such things as were necessary. I love that. I don't want anybody in our church 
or anybody who's listening to this message today stressing out about things that are necessary. We have a God who loves us so much and he knows how to extend his providential care to you and me. I keep going back to that song that uh, I've been singing through this season. I learned it in Palestine, Texas this year. It says, all my life he has been faithful. And I can't tell you how many times that God has provided for me, for this church, for our ministries with people and with resources and provided everything that was necessary. And as I've been pastoring here at Fountain of Life, we've bought multitudes of computers and, you know, projectors and sound systems and all things like that. Uh, but one of the things that we needed to be able to go on Facebook Live next Sunday, you know, was a bigger, more powerful computer that would help us do that. And you know, God in his providence had someone donate to the church here, not only a computer that's going to function well, but also a server and, and many other blessings alongside of that in IT work. Come on, I'm just telling you that God will provide everything that we need and uh, i'm going to tell you this today god is going to take care of you if you're stressed and you're worried i want you to see this scripture that's the, that for the, that god provided to this shipwrecked bunch of 276 people such things as were necessary we must expect his providential care in our life i don't know about you but every time i open up this book I see his loving and giving and faithful hand. All my life, he has been faithful. So since we have a new day, first of all, we've got to be grateful for unexpected blessings. Can we just have a moment today as we end this message that we just thank God? Lord, we just thank you, God, for all the many blessings of the Lord. We thank you for all that you've done for us, God, during this season of coronavirus. We thank you for your healing power, your keeping power. We thank you, oh Lord, that you've been so good, so kind to us. You've kept us safe. You've kept us strong. You've kept us believing. You've kept us trusting, Lord. And God, we honor you and we praise you for that. And we offer you thanks today. In Jesus' name, we got to continue to serve. I want to tell you something. Don't, don't uh, say to yourself, you know, uh, I'm all done serving. No, sir. Listen, the day to serve is now. The time to serve is today. And so, Lord, we just dedicate ourselves to you once again. God, at the end of this message, as we've seen how Paul served, Lord, let us have that same spirit. God, let our energy, God, God, be derived from the Holy Spirit, Lord that makes us strong Lord that dunamis power on the inside of us that same spirit that raised Christ from the dead let it quicken our mortal bodies Father God so that we can serve you in spirit and in truth we can serve you and do whatever you called us to do and Lord we're aware of the enemy's attacks God and we are, I just make up our mind, Lord, that we're not going to allow the enemy to come in in any way, shape, or form to our church or to our homes or to our families. And today, Lord, we stand together, God, as a church, asking that this next season, God, as we gather together next week, since you've given us a new day, since you've given us a new season, God, we're believing you, God, for revival. We're believing you for healings. We're believing you for the gospel to be preached. We're believing for salvations. We're believing for a move of God. We're believing that people who haven't come to church in a long time will begin to come again. And God, thank you, Lord, for your providential care for us across our lives. We expect your providential care in our lives, and we honor you, and we praise you. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Listen, if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, I want to invite you to open up your heart and let him in. It's as simple a thing as saying a prayer to him and determining in your heart that you're going to repent of your sin and turn to the living God, away from any dead work, and serve the Lord your God. All you've got to do is cry out to him. Amen. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved, says God's word. Amen. Just call out on him today if you need Jesus. You can just say a prayer like this. Just say, Dear Heavenly Father, I know I'm a sinner. 
I know that I have missed the mark. I know that I've fallen away. Lord, that I have not done those things, God, that I should have done. And so, Lord, today I come to you and I ask for your forgiveness. I ask, God, that you would cleanse my heart and cleanse my soul of every aspect of disobedience inside of me. And, God, I pray that you would write my name in the Lamb's Book of Life. And so with my mouth, I confess the Lord Jesus Christ. And I ask him to come into my heart. And in my heart, I believe that Jesus Christ was raised from the dead and will give you praise and will give you thanks, God, because of your saving power. Heal me and touch me and forgive me and cleanse me today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Listen, if you prayed that prayer in faith, let me tell you, I believe that God is doing something new in your heart. Just write, uh, uh, just send me a, a message on Facebook or on YouTube and let me know if you prayed that prayer today. Listen, we love each and every one of you. We're looking forward to seeing those who can come uh, next Sunday uh, as we uh, reopen the church here and uh, even on this coming Wednesday night as we open for a Bible study. And uh, anyway, we're so grateful. Please, uh, uh, you know, can be, continue to, to keep our church in prayer because we serve a big and a mighty God. Thank you so very much. We love you. God bless.